Hello and welcome to Mal Makes. Today we're doing a painting based on Yoshi's Island. This is the full version. If you're interested in the time lapse, you can click on the card here. Otherwise, let's get started. There were some really cool moments from Yoshi's Island that I was looking at, but I think the most memorable level for me is Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy. So I wanted to paint that, and I was looking at the level and looking at the texture of the background and everything else in the game, and I thought it would be really fun to do this painting a little bit more texturally, a little more painterly, where I have big paint splotches instead of trying to blend the colors and making it look realistic. So this is just my sketch of how the game looks, but I'm going to be treating it very differently on the canvas with how I'm putting the paint down and how I'm leaving the colors without blending them into the ones next to each other. The first thing I want to do is figure out exactly where my sky is going to go and fill that in with my gradient. It's pretty smooth back there, I don't really have a whole lot of things I want to change up, but it does fade from a green to a blue to a violet at the top, and I need to know exactly where those trees are going so I don't cover up any of those colors. I want to make sure I see all three there in the background. A lot of the parts of this painting are going to be messy on purpose. I'm showing the brush marks where I have just swooshes of paint across the canvas. The texture of the paint itself might be evident in some areas. And these things together make a painting painterly, where it's showing off the qualities of the paint as part of the artwork. So I'm trying to do that for every piece. And I've already done these tree trunks, and I did that by painting them black first, and then working through some browns and to some oranges and yellows to give it that texture of paint. So I started with the black colors, filled all the entire tree trunks in so they were very dark, moved into some browns, into some red browns, into some orange browns and yellow, into some very light yellow colors, just making marks across these trees to fill all of that in, leaving those paintbrush marks, leaving the paint where it got a little bit thicker, a little bit more texture from the paint itself, so it looks messy on purpose. I did that a little bit in the sky. It didn't show up as well because everything was very wet and it blended a little bit more than everything else, but that's okay, it's far away in the background. Even with a painterly painting, skies sometimes look that way, but I'm not letting that bother me because I'm going to keep working and pushing this painterly feel. The next thing I wanna do is fill in all of the greenery. The same way I've done the tree, where I start with the darkest color, like I started with dark brown here, and then I work my way into lighter and lighter greens, uh, maybe even a little bit of yellow in there on the edges of these leaves. But I have to fill all of this in first because I don't want it to be quite as dark as these trees, so it stands out and looks different from them.
background is mostly done. The trees are all set. There's just some flowers up in the leaves and I've drawn them in to see if I like how big they are in their placement and I'll get to them later for painting. But I wanted to make sure I had the platforms exactly where I wanted them to go to make sure I could still see things like where the grass comes forward between these tree trunks here. So I designed where the platforms were based on that so I could make sure I see the parts that I like that I painted and I'm not going to paint on top of those. I'm putting a base layer down of pink first and I'll be doing the same with the tops of the platforms where it's the light blue green color. And then I'll start to add paint splotches in for detail where the little bits of rock stick forward and you get the highlights and shadows on the pink and the grass for the tops of the platforms. I'm beginning to move my way into some of the detail and foreground objects of the painting. I want them to have a little bit of a 3D quality because I think it'll help the painterly aspect if the paint is raised from the canvas and there's a little bit of texture with the paint itself. Now there's a little bit of that going on with the leaves just because of how I painted them, but it's not as severe or drastic, I guess, as I want it to be. Now I'm working on these platforms here and they're the first area where I really want to push that effect. I'm putting a base layer down of teal first just to cover up anything behind it like the grass and the tree here. That way I don't have to worry about any of those colors showing through as I'm working on that. And then once it dries, I can start to add the detail and the texture on top of it. Now I have things like extra heavy molding paste and high solid gel mat, which are acrylic mediums. Um, this one's a lot heavier and you mix it in with your paint um, because all of golden stuff is compatible with all of golden stuff and I can mix this into my paint and make it very thick and paste like and then when I paint it on the canvas it will have that texture and dry that way almost like a putty so it'll give texture to those areas as I paint them I want to redo the flowers with that as well so they stand out and the vines I want to do that as well so they have a 3d effect here on the canvas that will help that painterly effect like I said and I really couldn't do that in the background because then that effect would be here before I paint the pink and then I would have to paint the pink on top of that texture and you would still see, still see that texture underneath the pink. It would put that texture in the pink at a weird spot. So the background has to be quite flat and then I can work my way into these 3D elements. So I'm going to paint the base layer for all of these, let it dry, and then use some of this mixed in with my highlight colors and start to add in the detail for this to give it that texture in that detail. So I'm trying to make all of these details stand out more and more from the layer behind them. The grass stands out just a little bit, the petals stand out a little bit, and I want the vines to stand out even more. So what I've done is I've mixed some burnt umber into um, this high solid gel mat and put it in a Ziploc bag. And I'm going to cut just the corner of this off so I use it like a piping bag, like icing. And I've done a little bit of that here on my sketchbook just to test out how it looks. 
And this one over here is the one that I tried the hardest on to make it look good, where I have the two pieces twisting as they go across. It looks the most like the vines in the game. After it dried, I did a little bit of highlighting with dry brush of lighter browns, and that worked out pretty good. I wasn't as careful on some of these other tests over here, so I need to make sure that I go slow, take my time, and make sure I weave that brown paint as I'm putting it on the canvas across my chalk lines that I've drawn where I want them to go. The other thing I have to be wary of is when I cut the hole here for piping, I need to make sure I cut it very small because if I cut it too large, I can't go back. I have to slowly work my way and get to the size I want without starting too big to start with because some of these I started a little bit bigger and I ended up putting it in a new ziplock and cutting a smaller hole and it worked a lot better, which is why I just have this right here because I didn't like how thick it had been. So I need to make sure I start small because I can always make this hole bigger, but I can't ever make it smaller without just getting a new bag and starting over. piping in all of the 3D elements. Um, the leaves, the vines, the egg block, and the fuzzies. I decided to not put in the flower down here. With it drawn in, I thought it would be too busy, so I decided to erase it and just not have it in the painting at all. Now, all of these 3D elements are in various stages of completion. Nothing is really 100% done for those, but they all have different levels of being blocked in. The vines and the leaves are just blocked in their solid color. They need some highlights and detail, especially in areas like right here where it's dark paint on dark paint. You just really can't see it. So I'll add some lighter reds on top of the leaves and some lighter browns on top of the vines. The egg block is just about ready to start getting detail. I had to do a few layers of the gel medium like I did for the fuzzies, and it has to have a few layers because otherwise it's very rough and not as smooth as I want it to be to paint those details on. So I did a thick layer, piped in with the plastic bag, let it dry, did a thinner layer to fill in those recesses where it was the low spaces. And once it was smooth enough, I painted it white like I have right here. So I'll paint another layer of white on this and start to add in the circles that go on it for the spots, and then that will be done. And I'll do the same with the fuzzies once that dries. You can see that they're in various stages of drying right now, and they have to be totally dry before I paint on top of them, or it will just mix together and make a mess. So I'm super happy with the shape of them and the placement. I just need to make them look complete now so they're not just these messy spots on my canvas. Thank you. 
the very last thing I have to do is add the fuzz to the fuzzies. So I've put a little bit of a dark navy blue color into a piping bag or my zip top bag and I'm going to pipe over these chalk lines that I've drawn in and then everything else is done. And we're done! We have Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy from Yoshi's Island. If you're interested in this piece, you could buy a poster or a phone case, or bid on this original canvas. There's links down below. Also, consider supporting me on Patreon. You can find out more at supportmal.com. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes of Mal Makes, and I'll see you again here for another video game painting. Mm -hmm.